This is going to be an overview of the book of Nahum. Nahum means comforter. And the time is around 713 B.C. In Nahum you have three chapters, 47 verses, and 1,285 words. And you'll see that this book is a follow-up to Jonah. Jonah warned Nineveh that they needed to repent. And now Nahum prophesies of their destruction. Historically, Nahum prophesies of the destruction of Nineveh. And doctrinally, of course, you're going to see things about the tribulation, the destruction of the great whore, and the second coming. And then inspirationally, you'll find that sin must be dealt with by God in your life, in my life. You'll see that because God uses Nineveh to chastise his people because of their sins, and now he will judge Nineveh for their sins. So evil must be punished, and no person or nation is getting away with it. Their sick perversions and uh, corruptions are all going to be punished. And that goes for me and you as Christians. If we don't live right, we will suffer for it in the flesh. In chapter 1, you're going to see God's wrath against Nineveh. In chapter 1, you're going to see destruction is coming. In this chapter, you will see the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the main theme of these minor prophets. But it says in Nahum 1.15, Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feasts, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. What you have at the second coming is Jesus Christ coming back with 6,000 years worth of wrath to open up on the inhabitants of the earth. God is going to get rid of all the God-haters. Everybody was wanting Trump to expose the crooked people of this world and their dirty deeds, but the Lord is going to be the one who does this. Luke 8, 17 says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. The Lord is going to be the one to go in and black everything out. It's going to be like a nuclear blast in their face. In Joel 2, 6, Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. I heard so much about how there's going to be a blackout and power won't work and there's going to be martial law. I never really believed it, but I never denied it. In 2021, it's almost like we are living in some type of twisted Tim Burton movie or something. But the Lord has the power to bring in some troops. He has power to black everything out just like he did in Egypt and We'll do again in the tribulation. And we are the army that is coming back with him. All my confidence is placed on the Lord Jesus Christ because all a really good man can do for me is postpone America's inevitable downfall. But the Lord's going to bring in peace for eternity. And that is where I'm at on the subject because it says in Nahum 1-2, God is jealous and the Lord revengeth, the Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Nobody's getting away with anything. The verse says he is furious. He's furious and he's fast. He's coming back faster than the speed of light. He's fast and, the, and furious. Everything Hollywood has is just a counterfeit of what the Bible has. Nahum 1.3, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The Lord is slow to anger, so people think they are getting away with things. However, nobody is getting away with anything. All the evil junk these people are doing with the children and the deceitful things they are doing behind closed doors is all going to come out in the open. We can't rely on a man to bring it out in the open but we can rely on Jesus Christ to bring justice, and that's what's coming. He is slow to anger. He's great in power. He has the power to do all that he needs to be done, all that needs to be done to stop the corrupt stuff going on today. There, must, there may not be a man on this earth that has the power to stop the evil that is going on because the evil people 
are rich and they could pay off everybody. But God's got the power to shut everything down. He's the one with, he, don't, he doesn't need anybody's money. You can't pay him off. He's done got all the money. And he's the one with the power. And I'm looking for his kingdom because this kingdom on earth isn't worth a hill of beans compared to his kingdom. In chapter 2, you see the destruction of Nineveh. God gave them a chance with the preaching of Jonah. You remember how he went to Nineveh and preached the word. He said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. They heard good preaching. They got right, but they didn't stay right. God used Nineveh to chastise his people, but then God comes back around and judges them for chastising his people. What you'll see in chapter 2 is telling how uh, the enemies of Nineveh will come and destroy them. At the same time, the Bible is not only historical, it's also prophetical. In Nahum 2, 3, and 4, the shield of his mighty men is made red, the valiant men are in scarlet, the chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, and the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. That sounds like modern day artillery, a prophecy of modern day artillery. At the second advent, that's what it's going to be like. Something much more action packed than any action movie. The earth is going to quake. In chapter 3, Nineveh is described as a bloody city. And the avenging act of God on them is justified. Prophetically, we see the destruction of Babylon. It reminds us of Babylon because in verse 1, it ca it's called a bloody city. It says in Nam 3, 1, Woe to that bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Then look at Revelation eighteen twenty four. It says, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. So it's a bloody city. And Babylon is full, was found with the blood of prophets. Nahum 3, 4, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Notice the key words, whoredom and harlot. Obviously reminds us of the great whore mystery Babylon, the great. Nahum 3, 5, Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. That's what's going to happen to Babylon. Revelation 18, 17, and 18, For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster, and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? But her uh, skirts is going to be upon her face. The nations are going to see her nakedness. To remind you again, nobody is getting away with anything. I'm not getting away with anything. Anything I do wrong, I'm going to reap it in the flesh. My sins are paid for eternally speaking. I'm not going to go to hell. But if I sin in the flesh, I'm going to reap it in the flesh. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, if you have listened to this very, very quick overview of Nahum, you will no longer have to wonder what this book is about. The average Christian doesn't even know it is in the Bible or if it's in the Old or New Testament. The average Bible believer who studies the Bible regularly probably couldn't tell you what Nahum is about if you asked him off the top of his head. It's an unknown book, but it's a great book. It may be one of the minor prophets, but it's not any less important than the major prophets. The three chapters in this book are just as important it's not outdated. It's more up-to-date than your newspaper. It's more up-to-date than a newspaper you could pick up if you visited the future. Because what you're reading is not only history, it's prophecy. What you're reading is not only history and, and prophecy, it's also inspirational for you. You can apply it to your life and get some learning off of it. But this has been an overview of the short book of Nahum.